Hey, everybody, welcome to this week's edition of the Do It Now Show. I am your host, Dr. Christopher Vogelman, waiting for Dr. Kayvon K to come on. I hope Dr. K is a okay. So, today we're going to talk about a little bit more about being fascinating because. That's one of the things that Dr. K is going to talk to us about. Now, I'm not talking to hypnosis or anything like that. What we're talking about is creating the fascination or the Fascinate brand that Sally Hogshead is famous for. So I'll just share a little bit about this from her website while we're watching, waiting for Dr. K to show up. John Paduchak, who's with us normally, is actually working a live stream for another client. So it's Dr. K and me, or maybe just me. So we'll see what goes on as long as, long as we go through this today. So as we're moving along through here, you're going to see, of course, that uh, this is different than better as Sally Hogshead's uh, messaging. And she works with the Fascinator, Fascinate program. And what I love about her website alone is this idea of radical ideas, passion, action, shaking and stirred with a tangy slap of inspiration. Now, if that's not different, I don't know what is. Uh, you see a little bit of information on her, the various accolades from a number of different organizations. And of course, she's a New York Times bestseller, a Wall Street Journal bestseller book person as well. So I think maybe Dr. Kayvon K has shown up. Uh, are we here? Hello. Hello. You made it. Yes. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. You made it. Uh, there, I, I was ready to just can the live stream, but I figured uh, eventually you'd show. You know. Eventually, yes. How are you doing today? It's so, you know, sometimes it's dangerous to be late, like, uh, but we won't get into all that reproductive stuff. All right. So, um, yes. I, will I can see that you're uh, going over Sally's website. I was trying to because I figured out I got to stall until you show up. <laughs> so I figure stalling, stalling's a good idea. I do yes. like the fact that she, that she has this wonderful burst of color behind her. And I yes. I would tend to agree that different is better. Different is better than better. In fact, my uh, admonition to most people when we're working with those folks who are starting new businesses and developing brands is to differentiate or die. And that's particularly true if you have a business that's on the ropes and needs to uh, needs to be uh, greatly improved or overhauled. I will say I love the fact that she also embraces her last name. Um, you'll see at the very end of this, she has the logo of the uh, hog's head, which I thought was okay, it's, uh, right on the there. Top left. That's there it. Go. That's the um, one that I love. That's so, the logo. That's the logo. And different I think she color. actually has an actual um, hog's head uh, on the wall in her office. She probably does. And I think that's just, you know, that's uh, embracing everything that you can about yes. your name, no matter what. So I am Vogelmann, which is Vogelmann, in German yeah. is Birdman. And so I should just be flapping my wings on a regular basis. So. Oh, there you go. What, does, like your, what does your name mean? Carlos Dade? Yeah. Or Kayvon? No, the last name. Oh, uh, well, um, the word Khalil or Khalil means uh, friend. Okay. Um, but uh, which was, uh, it's a reference to Abraham the yeah. um the uh, prophet as well correct um but my great grandfather his new first name was khalil and zade at the end of my name is like the son like thompson johnson kind of a thing so we are sons or descendants not sons you know the descendants of of him khalil zadeh so there you go yeah wow. we are the khalil sons <laughs> yeah, so you're not, but you're not putting that on your on your uh, brand behind you on the wall so uh no uh, no i don't no. know how Okay. I don't know how to do it. I don't know what he looked like. <laughs> we, could, we could do something with the K's. We just don't want to do three K's in a row because that would be bad. Yes. Anyway, uh, but things my, are my more first name, Kayvon means, uh, Yeah. Kayvon means Saturn. It means what? Saturn, the planet. Oh, I thought you said satire. <laughs> not satire, <laughs> no. No, that's a... That's my style. <laughs> your style is satire. Your Kayvon yes. means Saturn. So you're Saturn. Yes. Wait, wait, wait. Saturn, Saturn, the friend of the descendants of uh, yes. Abraham. 
Okay. Well, now that we've got that out of the way, we're talking today. Did you have a screen thing that you wanted to share today or no? Or we could just well, I do have a bunch of slides. I thought, yeah, um, how, what do you think about this? We do a quick review of what we talked about and yeah, yeah, we yeah. Take further as far as what we talked about as far as building the anthem. Sounds good? That sounds good. You talk away and I'll just add color commentary. <laughs> okay. So um, let me share my screen and you tell me which screen you can see because... There are two over here. Um, no, no screams. <laughs> we haven't so, gotten to the screen share yet. Dr. But, I mean, K. Oh. Simplifier and Profit Coach joined. It says you joined. <laughs> so, yeah. I think it's because you shared your screen. So when you first came in, it's yeah. one thing. And then when you shared another screen, thing, it's as if you came oh. in all over again. So there you go. So uh, that. can you can you see my screen now? Yeah. How to fascinate. What if you could make your brand impossible to resist? OK. Yeah. So just remember that the way that uh, this uh, this works, I'm using Keynote. Um, I mm -hmm. cannot see you anymore. <laughs> uh, <coughs> Which has okay. happened every other time I've done a Keynote presentation yes. within this live stream. <laughs> OK, cool. So um, what we talked about, um, you know, I, I mentioned uh, I like to, you know, for two to describe this whole idea of, of using your advantages for communication, I like to use this example. You know, some of us are readers or some of our us are listeners when it comes to receiving information. So like like I know I'm uh, myself, I'm a listener. So podcasts, audiobooks, and conversations work better for me as far as reading an email or reading a book and that sort of thing. So see, that's my advantage. That's my preferred way of communication. Same thing with outgoing communication. Some people are writers, some people are talkers. Um, so the communication modality can change um, um, and and that kind of a thing. Does that make sense? Totally. Okay. Um, so this is, we're going over the slides that I use in, in my workshops. So as you can see, there are a bunch of things that they are for different people. Uh, let's get started. So the um, why do we want to fascinate anyway? We talk about different is better than better, but to what end? And the idea is that as a uh, you know personal brand or business brand or just in personal life, so business or personal life, we're always dealing with some threats. And these days, the main three threats to, to your brand, to your personal brand, to your business, are the three things, distraction, competition, and becoming a uh, uh, commodity. Yeah, distraction of, yeah. is this whole, you know, <clears throat> smart devices and phones and notifications and email and social media and all of that. You want to stand out with your personal brand uh, among all of the other competition that is out there. So uh, I'm, you, sorry, you just scroll, I'm sorry, I was scrolling through TikTok. <laughs> there you go. You think, I, that's I, think I'm kidding too. Yeah. <laughs> that's a. Uh, and, he, and here's the thing, you did a good job of communicating that just by voice, because as I, did, I cannot see you, so I don't see well, your facial expression. That is so, true. Yeah. So the listener yeah, in me, okay. I was able to pick up on that, right? <laughs> by tone yes. of voice, you are good with audio. Yes. Um, so the other one is competition. If you are you're in business and you offer a service, you have competition, hmm. which, you know, just uh, the nature of the thing. And... Uh, the other one is commoditization, as in, if if you and I offer the same service and we describe it the same way, um, well, customers are gonna okay, who's cheaper? They're gonna go with the cheaper option. If you are not different in any way, therefore, it's very easy to put everyone in the same category and compare them and basically say, well, I'm gonna go with the cheaper option. Becomes the price war. You find yourself always. Uh, competing on price and lowering your price so you can get more uh, clients. And guess what? That's going to eat out of your profit over and over. And soon we end up, you know, just uh, trying to keep our heads up ab above the water. Yeah. I mean, the yeah, race to the bottom, bottom, bottom will destroy your bottom line. Yeah. There you go. Race to the bottom. What? Will destroy your bottom line. Will destroy your bottom line. I love that one. I'm going to write that I down. made it up in my little old head. <laughs> yeah. <So. laughs> The race to the bottom will destroy your bottom, bottom line. line. Perfect. Um, so 
usually at this point of the workshop, I ask people to see which one of them resonates with the most. I think the other time you meant um, competition, right? Yeah, I think it's competition more for me because yeah. I don't have any trouble standing up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the other thing is, so when you mentioned commoditization, I thought this was very interesting because because currently I'm on a little bit of a keto intermittent fasting program to get rid of some of my pandemic weight. And and but what's interesting is you can have a loaf of bread, but yes. then you can have a specifically a loaf of bread that has the word keto on it. Uh -huh. And the pricing will be very different because it is keto specific. So that's yeah. a good differentiation in bread. Let's put it that way. Yes. Um, and, you know the the, uh, the what's inside could only differ a little mm -hmm. but the, the name change will you know prompt um doubling the price well That's plus it. if you had yeah they'll double the price or at least you know be 50 percent more but yeah. the other thing is that 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 there could be then multiple brands of yeah. keto bread so you further differentiate and basically niche down until you have i don't know what is it yeah wonder the wonder bread of keto <laughs> Breads. I don't know. Well, well, here's the thing. Like keto, you 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 brought up a great point. Um, if if I'm on a keto diet, and so therefore, if I see a keto bread, I'll buy that. But right. what if there are three keto breads? Then I'll go for the cheaper one, unless one of them says keto bread uh, specialized with intermittent fasting. You know, maybe yeah, and that would work. Yeah. That yeah. would work. Or keto bread for men. You know, right? Uh, keto bread for men. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. They put some sort of a seed that's Just better for me. the hair coloring thing. Strong, or, you know, this one has, um, uh, what is it? The sunflower seed. The other one has something else. And right. one exactly. works, you know, like soybean seed, works better, like better with uh, female hormones, I, I hear. So mm. that's everything. Sort of it's mm -hmm. differentiation. So again, um, they never said, our, we, we see, we never said in, the, in this conversation that this bed, bread is better than the other one. We just said, oh, it's different and it's more specialized to me. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I'm buying it. Uh, and the other bread could be actually a higher quality bread. But right. we don't care. We don't even go there. We don't even, it comes to, to our mind. So um, my main question at this point for everyone is, well, with these three distractions, how have you been solving it till now? Right? Um, so that's a question that you and I can discuss right now, or I like to invite our um, viewers to think about that. Let me, how yeah. am I, you know, how am I addressing distraction, competition? Just, speaking of distractions, I realize I had not even been looking at the chat, and so far it's relatively quiet. Okay, good. Okay. So make sure I'm not missing it because I know most of you will be watching this on replay. And yes. please, whenever you're watching on replay, put your comments, questions, suggestions for other broadcasts underneath this video. Yes. In one of the 10 places where it's currently broadcasting. Hmm. All right. So let, let me ask you a question yeah, now. Sure. Um, so uh, we are doing these um, weekly sessions, you and I and John, mm -hmm. and uh, there are other things going on. Okay. And uh, I think people uh, might not remember that we, the three of us, we have never met in person, right? <laughs> that is correct. We, we we don't know, you know, I don't know whether to look up on Dr. Kavon or down, but I have a general idea. I have to look up. Well, I'm six foot four. <laughs> I will be looking up. My stepson's six three and I already look up to him. Oh, there you well, go. Well, so, literally, not yes. metaphorically. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, the, the thing is, you know, um, right there, when people meet me for the first time, they mm -hmm. have a first impression. Oh, this is tall, big dude. Kind of a thing right so that's the first impression what they remember and there are other things so when it comes to to our brands and to our personal brand and business we sort of have a first impression that um you know other people remember us so i like to ask that question about myself mm -hmm. the first few times or first time that we had an interaction as people um what was your first impression of mine what what got your attention so to put it in this context what was fascinating for you um, it was actually your accent uh -huh. and your hair. There you go. So you didn't know how tall you were. But I mean, here's a white-haired dude. How old is this guy? But the accent was very interesting. And also in there amongst the mix is probably the MD thing, you know, Dr. Kavon. Right. I was like, what was his specialty? When did he go to school? Why is he not practicing anymore? All that stuff was rolling in my head. Perfect. See, we all, that happens anyway, right? It was almost so, instantaneously. It was like within two to three seconds, all those things were in my head. Yes. Could you, could you answer the same question about John? Not that we don't have him here. I no, answered with my first impression. Um, well, <clears throat> well, I did pick up on the accent. 
<laughs> because he's definitely got the Western New York accent and I'm from yeah. Western New York. So the sound, once again, was very important to me. Um, great sense of humor, smart, you know, that, that whole thing. And he had the academic pedigree of RIT, which is the Rochester Institute of Technology. Not an easy yeah. place to get into or to graduate from. Okay. And the okay. RV, all the other stuff that I learned about him in terms of RVing and other things like that were incidental. But I also knew that he was in internet marketing because we were both uh, commenting in the uh, in the comments section of a live stream of a mutual coach whom we had both contracted with. Yeah, and also this is how we got connected too in yeah. the, the chat session chat session of Rich Treffin live right. stream. Exactly. Right. The chat yeah. sessions, yeah. So I mean, you can really—it's interesting how you can make connections with people just in a chat section. It's pretty yeah. fun. And and there is something about them that gets your attention and you find attractive, because you know you mentioned the accent, the the white hair, or uh, or John uh, being smart, Kayvon not so so much. That kind no, of I never <laughs> said that. I never said that. But we can work on your sense of self worth. Yes, there you go. Now, now your stand up comedy—that's when I'm getting a little, you know, iffy. You're getting a what if he about that about my assessment of you so hey, <laughs> terms of... let me redeem myself here by telling you a joke okay so, the other day i was, I was having a conversation with my girlfriend All and right. she was pissed off at me for impersonating a, a flamingo and i had to put my foot down wow <laughs> <laughs> talking about iffy right forehead moment <laughs> I so just how was that? that all the way around so I could palm my forehead. So yes, there you we'll go. see that later. <laughs> so getting back to the point, um, yeah. that whole idea of first impression and right. and making an impact and being remembered or not, you know, mm -hmm. all of that um, is happening anyway. It's part of human nature. And you right. might as well make sure that you do it intentionally the way that you wanted to show up. So mm -hmm. How do we fascinate is usually by one of the seven ways of, of fascination. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, we are attracted to someone and we find them fascinating because, you know, you might be thinking creatively or you connect with emotion, connect with lead and uh, with, uh, you lead with authority. Mm -hmm. um, you set the standard. There are some people that they always, you know, um, ask us to rise the standard and do it in a better way. Mm -hmm. Building loyalty and listening with care or People who save us from not, not when, when we don't pay attention to the deals, they are the ones that they're detail oriented. These are the seven ways that Sally Hawks has, has identified that people uh, basically what find. Question? I have a question on number seven, protect yeah. the details. I mean, what does protect the details mean? I kind of get all the other ones. Are you hiding the details or are you are preserving or what are you doing? Well, with details? You know, the, the fine prints are easy to be missed. So therefore... Okay. Their value is is not part of the equation, so I think okay. that's what I mean by by protecting. Okay. okay. Right. So again, going over definition of fascination, it's a neurological state of intense focus. When you're fascinate your listener, you're more likely to connect uh, with them, so they remember you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we already talked about it's about discovering your distinct value. Each one of us uses the. Um, almost, well, I think all of us, we use all seven languages and mm -hmm. two of them more than the other ones, as in our primary and secondary one. Mm -hmm. And that's how uh, we communicate at our best. Okay. Um, fascination advantage, knowing the ways that you can be fascinating to others and, and communicate with them. It's the antidote to distraction. So remember the, the three threats. Um, fascination advantage is the antidote to the first one, distraction. And then you can take that further and create an anthem for yourself or a way that you introduce yourself that um, is antidote to competition and commoditization. So like uh, Kayvon simplifier, right, is, is that. So I am separating my, trying to separate myself uh, from becoming a commodity or separate myself from all the other uh, productivity coaches that they're just a productivity coach. I am a simplifier. So people tell me, hey, I am not sure what that is, but I want that, right? So right. that's that's what, or, or my new brand. Uh, I'm not just a business consultant. I'm a profit finder. Right. See how it separates. Uh, first of all, it's an antidote to distraction, gets an, gets somebody's attention, mm -hmm. and it's it's helping me to 
um, be different from all the other business consultants out there because um, now I'm talking about the specialty and the way that I do it, profit finding. How's that? Does that make sense? It, it does make sense. Quick, quick question. Are, are you on the second point in your about a fascination thing on your slides? Yeah, I. you should okay. see two lines. Right? Yeah, I see two lines. It just took a long time for the anthem to appear. That's why yeah. I was a little confused. Uh, okay. Yeah, I um, I was looking at the wrong screen. and. Uh, okay, yeah. that, worked, that happens a lot yeah. when you're it's, doing these presentations. It's, yeah. it's, it's pretty rough. Well, I say, interestingly enough, so are you, I would say, are you a simplifier or a profit finder or are you both a simplifier and a profit finder? And how would I know to come to you if you're advertising both? Well, there, that's actually the other conversation that we had the okay. other day. Remember okay. when uh, when we were talking about the uh, the awareness of the market? Um, yeah. We had this conversation about Eugene Schwartz's book. So mm -hmm. knowing where your client is and what kind of a message you will need to have for them, you mm -hmm. have you will have the appropriate message for right. the that they are. You know, I can help my clients, and I am helping my clients with three in three main areas: mm -hmm. uh, performance, mm -hmm. productivity and profitability right so depending on which one of those i'm talking about and each one of them has its own you know opening middle and end then i can appropriate the language for that and introduce myself as a simplifier for mm -hmm. performance and productivity or profit finder for profitability but you don't want a separate brand for for the middle one for the for the the uh, productivity would you yeah profit pr productivity and performance they are both we'll overlap with right. the two or no or they're all in the simplifier one. Yes. Or they, they handle you handle both of them, right? Yes. I mean, yeah. In, but in either one of those cases. Okay. Correct. Got it. And when I say performance is both on personal performance or mm -hmm. business performance. So basically, if we want to do things better, faster, easier, and all of that, mm -hmm. let's say if it's about a person's uh, productivity, let's call it performance. If it's about Got the it. business's productivity, we can just call that profitability. I mean, uh, productivity. Yeah. And your product is profit. Or yeah. your products your products are profits anyway yes yeah. that's your kpi i'm profitable yes yeah. now here's the thing people think that they have to change a lot of things mm -hmm. but that's not the case no oh. you don't have to learn how to be fascinating you just have to unlearn how to be boring <laughs> i need to do that <laughs> well For you're sure. not boring at all <laughs> i'm not no oh, please talk to my wife no anyway <laughs> but let me oh, ask I... you a question that yeah. um you know, if if we are you and I were in front of an audience, I, I yeah, think yeah. it would be in their head. So I'm I'm gonna pretend that we're doing that. I'm gonna ask you that question. Okay. Um, why? How do you think people become boring? I think they just imitate everybody else. Y yeah, you hit it, uh, um, the nail on the head. Okay, when we good. start to do something that we see in somebody else, and that's not who we are, we try to yeah. imitate them. We yeah. become boring. Yeah. Like for example, Gary um, Gary V. He's a yeah. different, very different personality than who Correct. I am. And if Correct. I try to talk like him, act like him and all of that, it's going to be fake. After a while, yeah. I can't hold it. And it would be yeah. just an empty uh, ghost in a shell kind of an act. I will be boring as opposed to doing it my way. Right. You'd be ghostly V or ghostly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. So the, the greatest value that we can offer to other people is becoming more of our of who we are and by knowing how we fascinate and and staying in that zone um so because this span of attention is 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 short right um yeah. you are always delivering value or yeah. or you are being boring but here's the thing yeah so is it, i i often think that the notion of becoming more of yourself most people are afraid of that because they're afraid of the ridicule and being rejected by other folks it's a self-worth kind of thing i think correct yeah. Which which has which is another conversation, but let right, me right, right, right. miss that quickly. Okay. Um, the thing that we are afraid of, like that ridicule or self worth mm -hmm. kind of a thing, mm -hmm. when we want to be ourselves, is even stronger and and more pronounced and bigger threat if we try to imitate other people, right? Correct. So uh, that's even more dangerous to uh, to imitate other people when it comes to yeah. being ridiculed and and that sort of thing. At least yeah. uh, by being yourself, you will have some real fans. Well, yeah, and they will stick with you through thick and thin. Won't be there won't be a case where they're fair weather fans and friends yeah. and just disappear on you. So. Yes, got it. And every time we imitate, we are uh, forgettable. When we are ourselves, we are remarkable, as in worthy of remark.
So we have to rewrite the lyrics to unforgettable to you're forgettable, imitating everyone else. Sure, let's do that. <laughs> you're forgettable. No. Anyway, no, we're uh, doing that. <laughs> Dr. Volgerman, I'd like you to read this a slide loud for us. <clears throat> there you go. Pardon me. 85% of your financial success is due to your personality and ability to communicate, negotiate, and lead. Shockingly. Only 15% is due to technical knowledge. Brought to you by the Carnegie Institute of Technology. Yes. <laughs> so that reminds me of something that uh, Rich Sheffern always says. You know, yeah. he says, uh, between two people who offer the same service, the one who is a better marketer is going to be more successful. Oh, I agree 100%. Yeah. yeah. There yeah. we go. So it's, right. it's like that. It's about marketing and being having a you know, unforgettable, fascinating brand, personal or business. Mm -hmm. And um, um, and obviously, you know, there is an there is a assessment to find out what your um, advantages mm -hmm. are. Um, but unlike many other um, assessments that they're out there, like um, Strength Finder and other ones, mm -hmm. um, they're all about how the world, how you see the world. But Fascinate Test is about how the world sees you. And how you can basically um, pr plan for that and and design that when you're at your best. How the world sees you is the main conversation here. I do find this fascinating because there's another person whom I know who has something somewhat similar to this. Insofar as she has looks at twelve different types of personality brands, right, and, and then differentiates based upon and you same sort of thing, which is everybody's all twelve, but you're probably going to have two dominant ones. Yes. So, yeah. Well, interesting. I'd like to know more about that. So we'll talk after the program. After the program, <laughs> yes. So what are the seven advantages that we use? Um, so again, this is a review. Uh, uh -huh. When we um, use the language of creativity, that advantage is called innovation. Mm -hmm. For the language of relationships, it's called passion. Language of confidence is power. Language of excellence is prestige. Language of stability is trust. Mm -hmm. Language of listening is mystique. And uh, language of details is alert. Now, let me know which one is does, like has a question mark for you. It almost, I mean, have a question, the one I don't understand? Yes. You know, what I don't understand is why the word mystique is labeled for the language of listening because i don't think it's any mystery to me that listening is important and how to listen yes we're talking about a a certain way of operating okay. right so you have seen these people that they usually are quiet in the meetings they don't say a lot mm -hmm. um, but we know they're listening very carefully mm -hmm. um they are the kind of personalities that they listen to everything and everyone and they're kind of processing in the background and usually they say one small little thing here and there, which mm -hmm. is very valuable and changes the game um, and that sort of thing. So some people are good talker and listeners at the same time. We're talking about the ones that use the skill of listening a lot more than they contribute or, or speak. But when they do, it's something really, really valuable. So a very silent, wise person who will yeah. just give you a few gems. Yes, there you go. That's exactly it. So that kind of person is a mystical kind of a person, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's there's a mystical personality. <laughs> like what's what's going on in that person's head all the time? You know, yeah. and, you want, and then they finally utter a phrase or a couple words. Yes. Okay. So uh, it's like um, you know, there is no try. You all, you only do. You know, what's that? Yeah, Yoda, Yoda, Yoda says. You oh, know, no. like do that. or do not. There is no try. Yes. So that's that. Um, <laughs> so I have a bunch of slides about. Uh, different uh, keywords for each one of the advantages, like um, for innovation is creative, visionary, entrepreneurial. Um, there are like three words for each of them. They're, this is going to be a long one, so I'm just going to skip over these. Um, going back to the how we use our advantages, as I said, everybody has a primary and a secondary. Um, mm. And the, with the way that we use them is a bit different. Um, primary is... Um, what we do, and secondary is how we do it. Hmm. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Yes. If there's a tertiary, it's why we do that things. Thing. Like for example, uh, my first one primary is innovation. Mm -hmm. 
So I am the one who, you know, comes up with new ideas or connects the dots in a new way. You know, I hear this a lot from people. When I say something, they say, oh, I never thought about it like that. You know, mm -hmm. so that's the feedback that I get. That's yeah. Do feedback. they always start out with ooh? Sometimes it's with ah. Ah, okay. Go ooh and ah. Okay, good. <laughs> and sometimes it's ah. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay. great. So my secondary is called prestige. So if you remember, it's the language of standards. Usually oh, yeah. when, when I say something that is, gets their attention, it's always an improvement. It's, okay. it's called to rise to the occasion. It's, it's an invitation for doing it better, bigger, mm -hmm. faster, mm -hmm. improved version of it. So that's how I do it. So by, by continuous improvement, through new ways of doing things. So remember how I told you that each, each um, one of those advantages can have a bunch of adjectives to describe it. So a way to describe my personality type, which in, or archetype actually we call them in, in um, fascinate um, lexicon. Uh, my archetype is called trendsetter. And the way that I show up at my best, the highest value that I have for other people, it's called cutting edge strategies. So, knowing what's working or what could work and being you know up to date with what's going on and mm -hmm. how they can apply to make things better on a strategical level you know so then we when we have the right direction and strategy then we can get busy on on tactics and implementation okay makes sense yeah yeah and uh, by the way did you remember yours did you find yours i don't remember mine i know innovation is one of them Right. Okay. It may, the, maybe it's the feeling one. If you went back to the other slide, I yeah. Well, I'm going to bring up the uh, the all of the uh, different archetypes. So as I said, uh, there are seven. No, what the heck? What the heck am I? I uh, we'll uh, we'll see. Is, is freak of nature one of the archetypes? <laughs> I'm sure there is somewhere in some somewhere category. in there. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody has uh, one of the seven uh, primary, gotcha. and one of the seven secondary ones. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, I, I told you that my first one is innovation, so top mm -hmm. left. Mm -hmm. And the second one is prestige, so kind of in the middle. So my personality type should end up on the first row in the middle. There you go. I'm a trendsetter. You're a trendsetter. Oh, so now I'm trying to remember. Oh, see, once you show me these things, I might have triggered. This may trigger a memory. Um, well, I think you, I think I'm the rock star. Yeah. The rocks, yeah. There you go, bolt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what it was because it was, it was, it was innovation and passion. So, so I like to invite uh, our uh, viewers and listeners to yeah. go back and look at the the Canva cover you created for today's <laughs> today. Yeah, I just <laughs> that <laughs> is both artistic and unorthodox. <laughs> well, it's an, it is artistic and unorthodox, and and it's just a lot of fun because when you were in Mexico, I created uh, that little picture of you at your expense when you didn't show up to our live stream. So. And I'm sitting on your hands, so it's like a well, yeah, you sort of like yeah, I'm just like. <laughs> I put it there. Well, this is where we did the fascination one a couple of weeks ago. And yeah. then and then the new one, I figured we might as well have a little continuity with the imagery. Yeah. And uh, but uh, I wish I would pulled in some of Sally Hogg's head uh, screenshots. Actually, I could have used that in there. That would uh -huh. have been interesting. So in retrospect, I probably would have done a, a better job of it. But I do. A I person who talks like that and has that kind of a approach. That's why we call the person uh, the rock star. Why? Why? For what? For which approach? For being sort of unconventional and taking, doing something. And also, you saying, you know, and I wish I could do it this way. So you're always improving it, taking it to the next. Oh level. yeah, there is there is this artistic side of me. Yeah, yeah. even though I've never trained in art. Yeah, there's no yeah. doubt about it. Yeah. Okay. Um. So that's that. We. Um, let me now skip. Dive. 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 Yeah. Is this like getting Patty certified and and fascinate? Now, I want to get to this part of it, which oh, yeah, is, that was, okay. that was our overview so far. Okay, good. And I want to say, like, now we get to that part of that. Um, we know our advantages. No, So, you know, mm -hmm. your advantages are rock star, right? Right. Old, right. Artistic, un, um, uh, unorthodox. Yep. How do you actually put that in a sentence together or in mm -hmm. a business title, as I told you? Mine, actually, when I did my, actually, let's go through this. Then I use myself okay. as an example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Anthem is um, your personality specialty, right? 
Um, that's that's what high performance do differently, right? Yeah. Um, they over deliver in a specific way. So if somebody is a simplifier, they are they always over deliver on on that part, right? Gotcha. And you know it's when you have a specialty that's your personality specialty, and you over deliver on it. You know people pay for that. Think sure. about any specialist that you go to that that they can really help um, with you and. Usually it's not a <laughs> competing on price. You might ask for a discount. You get a friends and family discount. Yeah. But it's like, hey, I can get this somewhere else with a lower price. You should, you know. You but should. this this reminds me of my dad so much, wow. and he used to say, "You don't go out there looking for a discount brain surgeon." There you go. Exactly. You know, it's like I'm with the cheapest brain surgeon I can get a hold of because I got this massive tumor that needs to be removed. Uh, is there a Groupon for brain surgery? Is there a Groupon <laughs> for brain surgery? <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. about i mean i think it's that's it's pretty much on there but exactly. yeah the competition on price as we said before you know i mean yeah you're just it's a race to the bottom there you go brain you surgeon up. is a good example of a high performer yeah they have yeah. a personality specialty they over deliver on that specific yeah. kind of way and you don't compete on price well and sometimes you know then the personality thing or the whatever a lot of times it's the people uh on whom they've operated for example Yes. Like, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the king of Siam, his brain surgeon was so-and-so, you know, you know, he worked on president yeah. so-and-so, you know, that type of thing. And so the, in that case, the, the clients or the patients of that brain surgeon kind yeah. of elevate the person's uh, personality such that it does fascinate people who yeah. might need that kind of service. If, if the procedure was successful. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> if, if, if the surgery was successful, but the patient died, it usually doesn't work so well in your favor. Oh, yes. So there you go. Yeah. Um, so going back to Fascinate and Anthem, yeah. the, the, the thing that we did is we, when you identify your advantages through the mm -hmm. fascination assessment, now you can articulate your advantages through the building your Anthem process, Anthem process, which is what we're talking about. Being able to the, the ability to being able to articulate your advantages. Sounds good? Yeah. I kind of tell you, too, I'm a little disappointed when I looked at my stuff there and I said to myself, to myself why can't I have more sort of, you know, why can't I be a trendsetter or why can't I do this? Because when I look at all seven, I keep thinking, well, I do feel like I'm a combination of all of them. Yes. Um, and, and I will emphasize certain aspects of those seven at certain times, depending on the situation. And, and we do. That's why we, okay. you know, we can work with all sorts of um, advantages, but some mm. of them, they are more natural to us and they are strength. So that's mm. how we deliver our highest value. So again, what you said is very important. We always deliver, we can deliver value, but our highest value is through our advantages. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's talk about the anthem. Okay. Every time you introduce yourself, you're either adding value or taking up space. <laughs> I, think, okay, I think I take up more space than I add value. So, <laughs> well, you know what? Um, I know, I know, we're joking, but we're also not joking because guess what? We all fall into that trap of trying to add value or or say something or make sure that you know we are noticed and all of that. Um, but that doesn't work. Yeah, no, but I do think I do think just being present for someone yes. adds a ton of value without even having to be original. Yeah, the, the, which is the language of listening, right? Got it. Yep. yep. There you go. So uh, when we go with that kind of value um, um, approach, I'm I'm either d d adding value or taking up space. I Got don't it. want to take up space, so I yep. want to really hone down on the best ways that I can show up for others, how the mm -hmm. world sees me, and adding value to to them. So mm -hmm. it is not your audience audience's responsibility to figure out how you add value and why they should listen to you. It's it's your responsibility, it's my responsibility, not my audience's. Got so it. therefore, by having a you know, again, a brand like Profit Finder, mm -hmm. um uh, strategic profits, um, what is epic win, right? They they explain what's going on there. So you instead of saying you know um like a you know like a law office or a accountant office it's just person's last name so what <laughs> right you mean it's not going to be like you know big settlement for you llc uh yeah well there you go there that would be yeah, that's your on. end result yeah that's the end result as opposed to you know uh 
Uh, well, he, look at this. With what is our um, um, weekly show called? It's called Do It Now Show. Do It Now. Yeah. As opposed to, you know, Doctor Vogelman and Doctor uh, Doctor K Van uh, K and uh, Doctor John Paduchak. Yeah. John Paduchak. So our, our, the three names doesn't mean anything, but Do It Now Show has value in it. So which one are you? Do it or now? I'm the now one. You're the now one? I guess I'm the no, do. I think I'm the do one. Oh, you're the do one. So I mean, implementation. I'm making right. John it, and I'm going to be the now. <laughs> John, if you're listening to these. John, John I'm going to do encourage you to watch the replay. We figured out who you are in the do it now. <laughs> All right. It. So, he brings the it factor. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. There you go. All right. That's oh. good. Your anthem, it yeah. educates uh, prospects on why you're the perfect solution for them, mm -hmm. for their problem. Your anthem delivers a specific and distinctive benefit. Hmm. Remember, profit yeah. finder. Right, right. right. Uh, do it now. Show. Well, is that is that your is that your anthem or is that your brand? Because maybe your anthem turns out to be your tagline. Yeah, it could be. Okay. What I'm saying is, when we look at it this way, yeah. we can use it in our tagline, in our yeah. name, in our okay. business title, and, and all well, of that, right? Well, because I was thinking of the one, the brand that I'm working on, well, I actually am doing, I'm working in the branding of Fundamental. And so yeah. Fundamental, I mean, it does have to do with mental, it has to do with happiness and fun, but then the tagline would explain it to somebody. So There you go. Got so it. you make it simple to remember, easy yeah. to communicate, and incredibly useful when you apply it. Got it. Okay. Right? There yep. you go. And explain what makes you different at what you do best. So fundamental has... I'm the original fundamentalist. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you got it. So for an anthem, there are basically two halves, two main yeah. halves to it, right? Of, of introducing yourself. Okay. One, how the world sees you. Mm -hmm. Two, how your personality adds value to others. Mm -hmm. Okay? So in other words, how are you different and what you do best? The adjective and the noun. Hmm. Now, t I, I like to like uh, stop on this slide for a while. This is important. Let's, so let's have a discussion. Does this make sense to you? And what thoughts are coming to your mind when you see this? Well, the differentiation, I mean, can the adjective be a hyphenated one? Yeah. Like it could be fun loving or something stimulating or something like that, you know? Yeah, I like to use shorter one word kind of a thing, okay. but but if yeah. there is no equivalent for fun loving, um, and if there is an equivalent that's not layman language, then I'll avoid it. Go for fun loving. Got it. Right? Yeah. Okay. So you want so, the one that makes the biggest impact and biggest connection. And so the noun is the what you do best. So you're looking at like you know, you would be a, like a connector, for example. Yeah. You would be a well, I know how you do trans. You could be a well, adjective would be transformative coach there or you go. something like that. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not just a coach, I'm a transform trans trans transformative trans coach. Yeah. I mean, that's where you can charge the big bucks. There you go. There you go. Okay. You got it. <laughs> so, so here's an example, right? Yeah. yeah. My archetype, trendsetter. Yep. Right. So what are my, uh, my specialty adject adject adjectives? So when you get your, when, when somebody does their assessment, mm -hmm. and again, like last week, I can, um, you know, provide the link for people to take the assessment if they like, mm -hmm. and if they, if they choose and they need some help, they can even book a call with me and we can go over it. Um, I, I can, by the way, drop that link into all of the videos that yeah. in the comment section. So with one right. click, that's pretty cool. There we go. Mm -hmm. So, um, there in the report and all of that you see that there are some um adjectives um available for mar archetype so as i said cu cutting edge is one of them right remember how was yours bold artistic you know um, um unorthodox mine are cu cutting edge elite and progressive uh -huh. got it so um yeah. so i had innovation first prestige second mm -hmm. The opposite of that, who somebody else who has the same two, but in the reverse order, prestige mm -hmm. first, innovation second, it's called my twin personality. So they also have three adjectives, 
um, original, enterprising, and forward thinking that mm. they can also apply to you. So again, now you have a bigger pool of, of adjectives to use for building around them, right? Got it. Got it. And, and for nouns, um, there is a process that you can go through and you, um, and I have done that. So out of a longer list that you choose the one that they apply to you, I have narrowed down my to two things, problem solving and creativity. And here's so, an example of what you said about the two word one. Okay, yeah, because I looked at, there's a hyphenated one right there. <laughs> yes, there you go. So see, like problem solving, I'm sure there we can look for it and find a one word um, description of that, but does that, does that connect, right? Right, yeah. So the way that you create it is you, you put all of the adjectives on the left side uh -huh. and nouns on the right, and you start playing around. So I could be a cutting edge problem solving, cutting edge creator. Elite problem solving, elite creativity, progressive. You know, you go through the combinations and the one of them that makes the best sense for you and your clients and your value. So in my case, it became forward thinking problem solver. Both are hyphenated. Hyphen. That's a lot of hyphens. Yes. <laughs> I would not and, recommend that for a URL. Yes. No. Um, so therefore, I wanted to make that even, you know, a little bit of a more oomph and okay. attention grabbing and all of that so i upgraded that to maverick problem solver oh we just saw top gun maverick was filmed here over the last couple of years so. so see that gets an attention uh your the maverick. very first thing that you said when you saw that it was ooh maverick or yeah. or i think of john i guess the former senator john mccain he was always labeled the maverick senator ah, there you go. Yeah. so see it there is already, already a connection with so many different things. And mm -hmm. in my case, I even uh, shortened that Maverick problem solver to simplifier. Oh, I thought you were gonna say mad problems. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there you go. I like that actually, that's very interesting to see it yeah. distilled to such a, to, to a singular word. Yes, so these are other examples. Ambitious creativity, inspiring leadership, under the radar problem solving, you know, what is it under the radar problem solver? Yeah, oh, it is. Yeah, okay. Stealth, a stealth problem solver. Yeah. So there you go. These are so when when you do your assessment, you can come up with um, um, the ones that um, um, that's right for you. So now your turn, building to build your anthem. Build your anthem, not the national anthem. No. So um, let's go back to. Uh, the other slide that we had with the whole, okay. um, so we got it, we, we got here. Yeah. Um, let me bring it up again. The matrix. We're in the matrix. So you're the rock star, bold, artistic, unorthodox. Let's see who's your twin. So yeah. it would be passion first, innovation second. That's the catalyst. Well, part of me, part of me is wondering if, if I am just that opposite. That's interesting because I've often referred to myself as a catalyst. Yeah, and yeah, the opposite, the twin many times makes more sense or yeah. makes a, a strong sense. Like in my case, what is it? Prestige plus innovation, the avant-garde, original, enterprising, forward thinking. See, mm -hmm. that also works. So mm -hmm. now you have bold, artistic, unorthodox, out of the box, social, energizing. Which one of these six resonates with you? Holy cow. No, I can't. And I gotta, you got to repeat those again because I'm a little yeah. slow. Um, I haven't the ones. Reading the I haven't had enough coffee today, I think. <laughs> Reading the ones under uh, Rockstar and Catalyst. Oh, I see where you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Right. So I just have to argue. Unorthodox, mm. out of the box, social, um, and energizing. Hmm. I'm a bit in the drama side, though. That's the problem. Or maybe I should retake this thing again. Um, <laughs> I'm looking down there. I'm seeing let's drama. Stay with what we got here. All right, let's stay with what we have. Okay, I wonder if I've changed over time. That's what's really interesting. Um, okay, so we're looking at it was bold, bold artistic, artistic. And orthodox. Okay, and orthodox is my pick out of those three. What was the other one again? The catalyst is yeah. out of the box. Uh huh. Social. Yes. And and oh, energizing. Oh boy, that's a hard one. Do I pick one out of each or just one out of all six? Well, tell me which two makes more sense to you or which one. I think the ones that would make more sense are actually, oh, God, that's hard. 
I'll, I'll just say for the time being, unorthodox and energizing. Okay. Although social, you know, out of the box and unorthodox kind of like come together for me. So, so yeah. So let's take this yeah. further. Yeah, I yeah. like that. And, okay. and here's the thing, because I know you and, you know, we have interacted a lot. I'm yeah, going to yeah. add my own two cents to it too. Okay. Right? So I would, I would love, no, I mean, I love the word unorthodox for you. Yeah. And actually the title for the, uh, the second one, the, the, your twin catalyst. So how about you introduce Hi, my name is so-and-so and I am an unorthodox catalyst. Uh, it, it, it sounds like I'm going to destroy people's religion with chemistry or something or, you know, blow them up. I don't know if I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I, I'm a little afraid of that one though. Well, let, let, let's just give it a try. We, we go over a few things and we All see right. what, what works. Go for it. What do you mean you know, going uh, going over? Oh, you mean like go so like the no, just game. say hi. Uh, my name is Dr. hi. My name is Doctor Christopher Vogelman. I'm an unorthodox catalyst, but my mom was Roman Catholic. Uh, no, that's not going to work. No, you just stop there. You don't go through the other one. Sure, no, because well, you know what it is too. Here's yeah. an interesting thing about words. So in my head. I'm thinking, you know, I knew I have a lot of friends who are Greek and a lot of friends who are Russian, and right. they're always Russian Orthodox, Greek Orthodox. And so for me, the even the word Orthodox or unorthodox, yeah, it doesn't it, it feels a little dis, uh, uh, uncomfortable. Yeah, and that's for you. Like I don't. That's for me. That. It's not for somebody else. You don't yeah. perceive that though, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, when I hear unorthodox, because I'm an innovation, right? Yeah, you're, you're I into... hear something that is attractive to me. Got it. Right. So at the same time, so there is, but, but that, that is a concern. So what is another word that you can use instead of saying unorthodox? Well, I might go back to the, I'm not, not out of the box. Doesn't work for me. I could be a bold catalyst or I don't want to be yeah, an artist. You, you just made it better. Both. Well, I like bold catalyst better than unorthodox catalyst. You know what? You just got it. I just was going to, you know, yeah. recommend that. Got it. Um, and you just did it. So uh, let's, let's, you know, take that, um, for I'm a ride, on too. I'm writing it down. <laughs> Take that work. for a ride, and Take it for a ride. Yeah. And if it throws you off like a really rambunctious horse, get on a different horse. Well, it's right for size. How about that? Is that better? Try it for size, yeah. Try it out for size. Yes. Um, what I'm saying is, um, when you start introducing yourself with that new anthem, or use it, you know, you can put it in a sentence that, um. I help my client um, as a catalyst in a very out of the box, energizing and artistic way of approach to growing their business. Oh boy! Right? So you you now you have a basically, but the the um, the main point is all of the other adjectives and all the other words for other uh, archetypes mm -hmm. are the ones that you don't have to worry about. Like uh, there is another one I'm looking at: elegant or observant or safe. Those are not how you provide your highest value when you're at your best. Right. Dr. Kavan is not the safe choice. No. He's the best choice. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's a high risk, high reward kind of situation. Well, yeah, that, that's what the word. In fact, the funny thing is the word orthodox made my palm sweat. I didn't know. <laughs> so, well, but, but, but you know, I probably, I, probably, back. <laughs> I probably could embrace that, though. Yes. You know, yeah. given enough repetition and and some auto suggestion, I probably I mean, because being unorthodox to me is actually great because I think it is this out of the box thinking and style and you do get noticed by being unorthodox. Now, yeah. you run the risk of being ridiculed to because you are quirky or unorthodox. So Well, you you, well, you, you in my mind two things. One is um yes, at the beginning, you have your initial relationship with the word, but yeah. over time, as you said, it grows on you or you develop a different relationship. Yeah. Sometimes it's by change of tone. And number two, um, none of how we feel is matters as much as when we say that, how it makes other people feel. Correct. And that's the thing that I need to get over because yeah. I, you have to remember that you are not your market. Exactly. And their opinion matters, not my opinion. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I'm full of opinions, just like I'm full of other things. <laughs> Aren't we all? Yes. Uh, yeah. What uh, you and I and John have in common, right? <laughs> we, are, we are all fertilizer producing machines. 
There is no end to it. <laughs> There's no end. To the... Well, yeah, it comes to an end. And, and do actually... you know the sign language for that? It's this. What is it? So this is a. Is that to no end, or is that your fertilizer? Yeah, this, is a, this is a sign language for bull. And that's oh, the... I see. Really? It's that the what BS. That's well, we've learned, we've learned something today. This is this is my favorite or my my earliest ASL uh, sign. Frustration. Yes, sir. <laughs> So one of my patients who was who was uh, hearing impaired did that one time with when she was talking about the clinic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he, had a lot of, he had a lot of this going on. So, uh, well, that was actually really interesting. I would encourage those of you who are interested. Why don't you drop that link or so in here yeah. the chat, and I can distribute it worldwide through the interwebs. Yes, yeah. Uh... Private chat. I'm going to make it public once you send it over here. And that is, you know, quite curious. I guess I could be an unorthodox catalyst, but I have often referred to myself as a catalyst for change. So that's really interesting that that popped oh, up. Yeah, well, catalyst for change is kind of repeating the same point. Yeah, and I realized that too, even right after we were talking about this, the catalyst for change. Because now that for a lot of people don't know what a cat, you know, what a catalyst is. They think it's a, it's a, you know, a, a piece of paper with the name of every cow that you have on your farm. That would be a catalyst. But I don't think I don't think that applies in this case. Yeah. So here I'm I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put two links in the chat. Two um, links? Boy, you're really you're asking for a lot today. Uh, where <laughs> is that? Oh, there you go. I found the chat. Um so private chat. Can well, I put, put it in the stream chat? No. I have to put it in the private chat. So well, one I is could, I think you could put it in there. I don't know. Let me see. Um no. It's only for the hosts, and I'm not a host. Okay, I gotcha. So here's the thing. The first link is not only the Fascinate assessment, but everything else that I recommend. Basically, all of my recommendations when it comes to tools to use, assessments to take, books to read, and all of that, I put all of my recommendations in this page. And you can go there and click on the Fascinate assessment and take that. And um, what do you think, uh, Chris? Should I put the uh, direct link to Fascinate? Test let as me, well. Let me pull that in. I mean, is it a? Is is it a? I would assume that you got an affiliate link, right? Um, yeah, I do. I'm a yeah. certified. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do both. I noticed that I am the only uh, Fascinate certified advisor in British Columbia, and Whoa. one of the, in it, one one of the two only two in Western Canada. Oh, Canada. It's starting to propagate here in multiple places. If it fails to propagate, it already went to YouTube very quickly. I don't know why. Right. And if then where you want to bring it? that on, on your screen, that page? Um, I could. Or you mean this page that you just, the first one, right? Yeah. The meat cave on. Okay, let me see if I can. Wait, you want to bring it on as, a, as, as the screen share? Yeah. Okay, I can do that. Let me... Uh, Oh, it's easy to find here. Okay, uh, t -t 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 let me screen share. I was I was on a different. I'm on a different one there. Camera share, and I got to find the right one. Boom, 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 boom. Screen. My affiliate link directly to assessment to assessment. So from that page or from this link, I yeah, it takes you to the same place. Let's see. There's Sally. Where is Dr. K on K? How did you disappear? Oh, there it is. Recommendations by. Okay, that's why I didn't find. It. I was looking for Dr. K. Okay, so this oh, is. Yeah, I'm, I'm enlarging a little bit here. So, so the first think. group is the uh, tools uh, to build and grow a business. So we have the group business tool. Yep. And these are the tools that I recommend. Right. Uh, right. Uh, so that's that. Uh, AppSumo. We are both a fan of that. If yes, you sir. scroll down. The next group is the tests that I recommend. So Fascinate, mm -hmm. we just talked about. That's the button people click uh, click on. Colby right. is another one. If you like, we can have another um, uh, live session about Colby. In yeah, that might be good. I mean, yeah. so but, you know, Kobe died in a helicopter accident. Yeah. So. so as far as authority well, building. Colby. Oh, Kobe. Sorry. Yeah. My, yeah. My, my Colby building, uh, these are the tools that you and I, um, the easiest way to write a book is my uh, friend Bradley Charbonneau. He has a fantastic process. It's called uh, "Write Your first, Worst Book Ever." <laughs> Yay! Yes, I am um, capable of that. 
<laughs> yeah, and a bunch of other links as you scroll down the page. Yeah, Canva, I'm a fan of that. Managing yeah. money, wise stuff, wise guys, atomic habits. I do love atomic yeah. habits. That's probably my favorite. Do the work. I've never read uh, Stevens. Oh, that changed my world. Changed my life. Harry Mazel. Some people say, yeah, Michael Moskett. And then there you have, oh, book a profit finding session with Dr. Kayvon K with his links to Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and the end of the LinkedIn. In the link, <laughs> in of the link. that way, not yeah. to be not to be confused with anything else. Yes, let's see. Uh, so yeah, link is in the in the chat. Uh, take the assessment, go through your thing, and if if oh wait, you've got another link here that you just put in. I didn't copy that link yet. Before we before we leave here, I want to make sure I got this link in. It's the same thing. Either that button from that page, or this this is just a oh, link. it's the same deal. It's right. just, yeah, so just a direct link for people to. Skip yeah. all of the other recommendations that just go to go the straight to the test. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm hoping that actually goes everywhere, but I don't know. It seems to be propagating. Interestingly enough, it only seems to be going to YouTube today, so I may have to yeah, save that's those. What I see as well. Usually, I see that it shows up everywhere, but only I see it on YouTube as well. Today, it's just weird. I know, uh, but you know, we've had our challenges with uh, Melon, so. But I will copy this. Yeah. Or your meet cave on link and i will put it in the other locations if they did not come in awesome. all right so we've gone for wow a one hour hour a full hour it's the hour of power with dr cave on k <laughs> and, and also you know, with the, i'm a bold catalyst or an unorthodox catalyst with the honor yeah so the I'm either problem solver and bold catalyst i'm either a, a bc or a uc if i'm uc i'm uck but 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 uh, or that could be the University of California too. There you go. Very good system. So, I you know I'll, I could be a you, know, you wanted to be a bold, unorthodox catalyst because then you'd be a buck. Ah. And I'd be able to make a buck by being a buck. All right. So anyway, so we will be. We know that the vast majority of you watch this on replay. So please use the hashtag replay when you are watching this. And if you have any suggestions, comments, uh, questions, just drop them down below. You have Dr. Kayvon's Kayvon K's link. I can't pronounce your last name to save my life. Nobody can. Don't hurt yourself. Don't try it again. Try it quickly. What's that? What, what's your last name? Quickly, see if I can repeat it. Oh, okay. So the. Uh... The, the correct version of it has the the first letter starts with sound. So it's a Khalil Zadeh. But uh, I guess we are um, in North America. So that's Khalil Zadeh. Khalil Vadi? Zadeh. Zadeh. Khalil Zadeh. Khalil Zadeh. But it was Khalil Zadeh. <laughs> or Khalil Zadeh, yeah. Khalil Zadeh. Yeah. Hey, can I pass as an Iranian spy? Yeah, sure Probably. you can, yes. Probably. Probably. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> All right. So we're we'll, in an unorthodox way. In a, in a, in a bold, an unorthodox <laughs> way. <laughs> so we will be back here at 2 p.m. Uh, next week, Friday, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. Yes. If it's Friday, Friday, it's time for the Do It Now show. So we will see yes. you then. And maybe Mr. Tavarish Paduchak, who is the it in Do It Now, will be uh -huh. up here with us. So he has you know, have a great and of week. Course, if any question or anything, just. Uh, Reach out. We would be more than happy to help. Reach out and touch someone, but only 